everyone. In uh, this video, we're actually going to do two videos, and these two videos are just us explaining kind of our thoughts on food addiction. And so in this first video, we uh, want to really just kind of differentiate and talk about, you know, how food addiction relates and differs with drug addictions, because both are obviously addictive tendencies, and they share a lot of parallels. Like, for example, the pathways in the brain are the same pathways activated when you, you know, binge on your enjoyment food versus binging on your drug of choice. Yeah, you get a uh, dopamine yep. hit and usually some endorphin yeah. response. The endorphins and the dopamine, and those are highly implicated, as well as a little serotonin, all of which are highly implicated in the learning. And so you learn, you associate. Glutamate is the big one for learning because yes. it locks in the memories yeah. and of the addictive behavior. Yep. And so what all of these things do is they tell your brain that was really good. We experienced a lot of pleasure from that. Let's do Let's it do again, again sometime. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of the exact same thing that happens with drugs. It really is. That's why people develop substance abuse problems with drugs, yep. uh, be it alcohol, be it nicotine and cigarettes, be it, you know, more kind of uh, illicit drugs like amphetamines or cocaine, uh, things like that. And it's because it stimulates these reward pathways that create an association where you now have this kind of unconscious urge to be like, oh my God, that's gonna make me feel good. If I do it, let's do it again. Uh, the only difference between food and other drugs is the extent of that reinforcement pathway. Food has a small hit, relatively Smaller speaking. Smaller peaks. Yes, you eat and it goes like this. You still got a peak, but it's not as high. You use something like cocaine or amphetamines, it's like, whoosh. and so you have a much stronger Withdrawal association, too. much stronger withdrawals when you don't use, much stronger desire to continue engaging in that habit. But that's the key word, is regardless of whether it's all a drug or food, they're all habits. And these habits are a natural part of how our brain works. Uh, you develop habit loops where you realize if I do this, then I get this reward. And that's that's why I cringe with the whole idea behind food addictions, because addiction, the word has been fucking ruined yeah. by society. Um, well, yeah, it's seen as something that you can't escape. It's a brain disease, it's faulty, It's and it's not. It's a habit loop, like everything is. Even drug addictions, they're habit loops that you can overcome if you choose. Yeah. And the choice isn't easy, but it well, is I a think, choice. I think a lot of people conflate that. Um, when, when you talk to someone who is currently trying to overcome an addictive tendency. They and feel. You tell them it's a habit and you can do this. You just have to choose to do it. Uh, they People conflate that reality with this is easy. Just because you, you can, can change it. and you can leave these habit loops doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And it doesn't mean no it's habit is just going to take a snap of the finger to happen, right? Um, talk to talk to someone that hates brushing their teeth. Like that is a hard habit to establish if you hate doing it. It is. Yeah. And so this is really something that that we're going to hammer on and kind of continue talking about in the next video. Uh, but for this video, uh, really the point we wanted to get across is that. Food addictions and drug addictions hit the exact same pathways in the brain. And certain people, I do want to clarify, certain people are genetically different in their responses to these dopaminergic pathways and endorphin responses to certain stimuli. And that's why certain people prefer binging on food rather than cocaine or alcohol. Like it just hits certain people's pathways harder. People have polymorphisms in different like dopamine yep. receptors, for example, that'll impact how susceptible they are to uh, different stimuli of those receptors. Yep. Um, yeah. 
And so everyone's going to have their, their kind of uh, Achilles heel when it comes to substances. And so everyone is susceptible to and some And some types. people get a bigger response from food, was my point. Yes, and some then people get a bigger The people response. that just have never binged, they've never dealt with food issues or anything, like those people just genetically, they're not wired up to do that. And they're not, I say they're not like built like the survival of the fittest, right? Mm -hmm. Because we are designed to want things that perpetuate society, right? Yeah. And so uh, I guess the takeaway here is that your addictive tendencies, be it a food or a drug, they all work on the same pathways in the brain, which means that addiction medicine thing. and research is directly applicable to food addictions. Yep. Um, and that's why I recommend a lot of the addiction books. Um, yeah. And just you transpose it on the food, right? Yeah, exactly. The wording. And so we're going to kind of delve into that side of things in the next video. So thank you. And if you enjoyed the content of this video, then great. That's what we're trying to do. And if you know someone who you think doesn't quite understand the similarities and differences between food and drug addictions, share this video with them. And then, you know, tomorrow when the next video comes out, share that with them too. Thanks.